In an earlier micro nugget, I demonstrated how security levels can help us when it comes to filtering traffic on the ASA. They're just a built in feature of the ASA that's so cool. And as you know, by default, a low security interface, a low security interface like the outside interface, level zero, cannot go in and access resources on a high security interface like the inside interface at level 100. But what if you need people from the outside to come and do things on the inside? Well, you can punch a hole through the firewall, if you will. That's what we're going to do in this micro nugget. We're going to see the ability to filter traffic with access control lists on the ASA. So to learn about these traffic filtering access control lists, we turn once again to our dear friend GNS3. Notice what I've set up in GNS3 is an adaptive security appliance. We have a device here on the outside network. We have a device here on the inside network. This, by the way, is very similar to what we set up in an earlier demonstration of a micro nugget where we went ahead and we looked at just security levels and basic interface setup. So let's try something here real quick. The inside network should be able to access the outside network. The outside network should be restricted from accessing the inside network. Let's try that one real quick. Let me go to the outside interface uh, outside device that's router 2 and let me tell net inside to 10 10 10 dot 1 that's the router that's on the inside it tries it and if we go over to the adaptive security appliance where I've enabled logging we can see that we are indeed blocking that the ASA is blocking that dynamically 192.168.11 port 53 436 is trying to get to 10 10 10 1 port 23 with a sin tcp packet and that first packet of the flow is indeed being denied and why is this happening it's nothing all that special i configured on the asa it's the fact that a low security zero security level interface is attempting to access a particular resource in a high security security level 100 interface so the asa is doing the job it was born to do and it is blocking that particular traffic attempt what if we wanted this telnet to succeed however well we can punch a hole in the firewall that's the common language that we would use for what we're about to do so we create a filtering access control list by the way i'm going to turn off logging right now because that'll kind of, well, you know what? It won't be too, too noisy. We'll just deal with the logging on because I want to see the logging that might occur uh, based on my configuration. So here we go. So in global configuration mode, we're going to create an access control list. Would we start with the language access list, do you think? Oh, looks good so far. Could we use context sensitive help to guide us in the creation of this access control list? Of course we could. Notice I can give it a name. This is going to be my ACL controlling the out access to the in access. So why not name it out underscore in? What kind of access control list is it? Well, we want to be very specific with it. So we are going to create an extended ACL. And we are going to permit a type of traffic that is being denied. Specifically, it's TCP traffic, and it is from host 192.168.1.1. It is going to the host 10.10.10.1, and specifically, it is going to a particular port and that's port 23 for Telnet. So look at that. We can be very specific with our access control list. Specifically, access list from out to in. That's our name. It's an extended one. And we're going to permit transmission control protocol traffic from this host to that host going to port 23. Now, Notice I use context sensitive help the whole way in order to assist me in creating this access control list. But we're not done. 
This ACL is not assigned anywhere. That's what we use an access group for. And again, we can use context sensitive help. So access group, what's the name of our list? Well, it was out underscore in, and we want to assign this inbound on what interface? On the interface outside. So we're putting this inbound on the outside interface. Wow, so powerful, yet pretty easy to configure. So guess what? We're ready to go out to that outside device. It was R2, and we're ready to retry the Telnet. So I choose Telnet 10, 10, 10, 1, and look at this. Telnet through the ASA now works beautifully. Did we have any logging about this? We sure did. This time it says, okay, we built a local host outside connection 192.168.11 to the local host on the inside 10.10.10.1. We built an inbound TCP connection, number one, for that outside device going to this inside device. So cool. If we do show connection detail, for instance, we can see this connection that was built to allow the particular Telnet flow. What else does the ACL allow? Well, nothing else because the ACL does indeed possess a deny any any. Yeah, absolutely. As its last kind of implicit command. So we are allowing this specific traffic flow, but any other types of traffic flow will indeed meet with a deny. Think of something else that we could do, by the way, with these traffic filtering ACLs. Remember what we set up. Here's our ASA, and there's this outside interface, and there's this inside interface. Remember how we said by default, stuff from inside can go out? No problem, thanks to the logic of the ASA. Well, what if you didn't want a particular traffic form going from the inside to the outside? That's conceivable. Maybe you don't want gaming traffic going through your adaptive security appliance during regular business hours. Well, no problem. You could completely set that up with an ACL denying that traffic flow that was previously permitted just by the inherent logic of the adaptive security appliance. So in this very important micro nugget, we took a look at traffic filtering access control lists in all of their glory here on the Cisco Adaptive Security Appliance. I sure hope this micro nugget was informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.